This is how Windows looked like in version 3.1, 25 years ago. It was before Windows 9.5 was introduced. And um, you can see that there was Program Manager with the various applications. There was also File Manager, which is today's Resource Explorer, with all of the folders on the drive, and of course, floppies. And um, different applications, but that was most of it. And then here I have the first Delphi, Delphi 1 installed, running on Windows 3. We can start it, and it's quite fast. You get something well, very different from today's, but still somehow familiar with the first project already created for you. Uh, you could have done with, with new project. And um, it's the designer. And behind it, there is the editor with the source code. And behavior is like this today. So you could drop a button, and drop an edit, and uh, a list box. And then whenever the button is pressed, add the text to the list box. So that would be list box one items add the edit one dot text oops sorry um, wrong keyboard mapping uh, that's mapped to an Italian keyboard and um, you yeah, had a hard time finding a semicolon. Uh, it turns out. Okay, it's the semicolon. And so what I can now do is compile the application. Uh, do a build, uh, which is fast. So we can barely see it or just run it. And this uh, is our application running. So the logic is, is there, and um, we have a bunch of components that are available. And you can write the code, compile the code, and we get a binary application. And actually save it into main Delphi folder, replace it, OK, replace it. And then if we go back into File Manager, we find the Delphi folder. This is our executable. <clears throat> yeah, we can run standalone because it's it's a compiled application. That's been the case since Delphi one, and it is still the case today. I'm wondering if I can have further information about that app uh, properties. Okay, this is my executable and uh, the properties and the settings. This is 10.3.3 compared to Delphi 1, slightly different. You can still create a Windows application. And um, as we've done, drop a button, add a um, list box, and an edit box and um, write the same exact code, this one, dot items, dot add, edit one dot test with a little bit of a help from code insight. And you can similarly compile the project and uh, run the application and it will work just the same we can see this is the latest version 10.3 update 3 it still generates executables which are standalone binaries 
need to save it. If I save this to somewhere, project is fine. And I build project 33. And I now open an explorer. We can see that under the Win32 subfolder, the debug, I would imagine, we have our project 33 executable, that is the standalone application. Same model, same approach. Uh, of course, a few things have changed. For example, I can equally um, build this application as a 64 bit application and just um, run it, uh, compile 64 bit and run it as a 64 bit app. Um, now, this, this won't make any visible difference in the app. But of course, that's something you couldn't do in Delphi 1, which was actually not even 32 bit, it was purely 60, 16 bit application development platform. Now, the other thing that is dramatically different is that we can grab this line of code, we can create a new multi device application, create a blank application, save this one. Um, do similar steps in terms of adding a button. If I can find it, but I can just type. And add a uh, list box. Place them so they don't overlap. So this is now my Farm Monkey application. I can click on the button, run the same code, run the application. And uh, this is my Delphi 25 app running on Windows. But now this opens up uh, quite a few opportunities because it can run it on Windows. You can create a Mac application, an Android application, or an iOS application. Run the same source code with the same UI. I can preview my UI for the phone platforms and see how it's going to look when it's executed into a device or a different operating system. And of course, there is way more, but just, just give a feel. Now, if we go get back to Delphi, let's see the available component, our standard components. You can create a menu. Uh, we'll write the menu designer. To create your menu items and hook the menu to the form. Label, edit, memo, which is a multi line edit, button, and so forth. There was a group box and the panel was already there. There were additional components the bitmap button and speed button, they were very modern at the time, probably not so much today. Uh, tabs and pages. A tab notebook, um, edit with mask, um, a simple, an outline, which is, well, kind of the predecessor of, of a tree view, uh, string grid, draw grid, images, and some other graphical elements, and then the scrolling area. There were data access components that were based on the BDE, Borland database engine, table queries, and the data source, same model still applies today. Data controls, including a DB grid, navigator, and the various dataware version of combo box, edit, and so forth. System dialogues to hook into the, the operating system, open and save. Um, some system elements, particularly the timer and paint box, plus access to the underlying file system, an OLE container, a media player, and um, DDE, dynamic data exchange components, it's kind of long gone. And then the ability to host VBX, Visual Basic components. So there were some Visual Basic component built into, and the ability to just surface um, 
VBX, of course, you would have to ship the VBX. Uh, compare, com while for Delphi component, you can compile them into your executable. VBX had to be distributed as external component. And then a few samples. Some of them have survived over a long, long time uh, for um, like the color grid. Uh, it's kind of very old style UI for picking a color. And that's kind of an idea of what was into the language was there they, there were very few editor features you see there's, a, there's a much you can do of course there was the ability to uh, put a breakpoint on a line and then run the application and stop it uh, on the breakpoint and do full debugging this is of course as i mentioned delphi client server this is the first uh, Delphi, and you can see the team of the people who were active in the project when this was built. It's a fairly long list. Now back to our VCL application on list of components in the previous in, in the first group. The standard group is not much different. It's the action list. Uh, there is a, a Win32 section that was added a long time ago with all of the standard Windows common controls. We have an XML operation sections. We have live bindings. We have um, internet access components, we have system components, including even Bluetooth, and, uh, and a new but for example, you can still see the old DDE components and so forth. We have tethering support to create mobile application that connect with the platforms one. We have additional components that have been extended largely in, in numbers and scope. We have new dialogues, uh, Vista onwards dialogue. We have Win32. As, as seen, we have sensors for if your device has support. Data access, which is slightly different than it was because this is just the generic component and there are, depending on the platform, we have Windows 10 specific components, actually quite a number. And for example, you can use a toggle switch or you can use a calendar view. And, um, and then internet, data control, samples, touch support, gestures, REST clients, DB Express, which is the older database access technology. Well, still newer than BDE, but older. RAD server specific components, cloud support for Azure and Amazon. A large collection of FARDAC controls for basic data access, uh, UI related FARDAC controls, um, links to the different databases that are supported additional services for your database operations, uh, mo batch moving and mapping data. And then Indy, which is Internet Direct, has a large collection of clients and a large collection of servers, plus some IO handler, intercept, miscellaneous. We have web service related components for SOAP clients, um, the data snap technology, support for Parse and KingB API. So the very old Windows 3.1 controls is still here. Remember I mentioned the ET outline, still have an outline um, available and, and so forth. Um, Fardac for MongoDB support. Um, this is my custom component, sorry. Uh, these are all add-ons. Uh, DBGo is part of the system. The rest is add-on components that have installed in this um, version of Rust Studio.
And last thing, if we go to the About box, uh, you can still type Alt Team and see the new team that is act has been actively working on the last few versions of Rod Studio.